All right, ladies and gentlemen, shout out my cat. Right. Yeah. Whoa, shout out. Thanks, Brett. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Nice drumming. <laughs> For the first time, I'm announcing that I actually have, this is the first time I've actually had merch with me. Um, on Saturday at Arts on the Avenue, I released my poetry quartet called On the Borderline, My Regards to an Incredible but Accidental Life. Um, it's a poetry quartet. Um, I was <coughs> uncomfortable ever releasing my poetry while I was still teaching. Now that I'm not, um, this is the first volume that I'm releasing. Uh, we do actually have copies with us, uh, so Dead Mike has those. Um, I have three completely unrelated poems tonight. Saturday uh, will be my dad's birthday. Um, he passed away in 2017. Um, he was 80 when he passed away. And so I always read this poem about Alabama. I'm going to Alabama. Um, about the poem is actually about when I was a kid. I think I wrote this like end of high school, probably later. Um, not entirely sure. It's called Untitled. Tom Petty played on my Walkman, headphones on, curled up in the passenger seat. Cooler behind me filled with Mountain Dew. Half sandwiches hurriedly packed because we never left when he said. It'd be five hours earlier and time to hit the road. My duffel bag was a suitcase, packed the day before so I wouldn't forget to bring any of the clothes and books, especially headed south, since north was the land of endless library shelves instead of limitless land, where I'd devour one story after another, hiding in the shade after I gave up fishing. One too many bleeding gills, one too many catfish grunts that she never believed until weeks later when I pulled out the aging encyclopedia and read the lines aloud until she read for herself. So glad to get away from lies and accusations. I never thought twice about living under heavy sunscreen, makeup bag discarded on the dresser by day two. Next is Blue Oyster Cult, cassette borrowed for my stay. Being the oldest of the kids didn't matter for those of us who couldn't swim, so a nine-year-old was in charge out by the creek. Before cell phones, leaving the state made me unreachable. As bad haircuts grew out, and I pretended not to mind the deer head on the wall because at least it didn't threaten me, not like she did, not even a full week back in a place where I needed a coat. Not just a flannel shirt thrown on at night. I always figured he'd teach me to drive down there, but maybe the six dog houses got in the way. It wasn't that he believed the lies about the inside of my head, because Big Brother taught me to shoot a gun, and I had a real knack for aiming back then, and no one minded. He'd wake me up in the middle of the night. Time to go home. Makeup case up front this time, tucked in tight beside me as I tried to doze, walking, playing softly through the headphones, CB crackling in the background, daylight rising for everyone but me. Woo! Wow. Woo! Shadow! never been read in public before. Um, so some of you are familiar with the Evil Librarian series. This is the most recent addition to that. Um, the title is exceptionally long. Um, and um, the letters are uh, because of his initials. So I'm going to start with the title and then just keep reading. Here's your sodding antecedent. He always said he would have been part of the 27 Club, except he ended up making that indie movie. P.S. Yes, my title has a footnote. <laughs> e is for his real name, never uttered on Facebook. And for E eats pills, except we now say E ate pills, because he loved grammar and linguistics, corrected people, had etymology memorized for too many words just to impress you. And it's for his middle name, 
but also his moniker. And for Mark Day, and for mail, and the library mark records he learned to enter that by now I could probably enter hearing him through grad school mumbling into computers. And then M for the addiction monkey on his back, the monster in the dark always pulling him back. If there's oblivion to be had, if I can only offer words, I know which way you're going no matter what I say. So M is for melting into his mattress. G is for his last name, his family name. He was so determined not to spread that lineage. G is for the grandiose ideas that filled him up sometimes. They became contagious and spread, not like a disease, but a cure, a cure to all that was slow and sad and stodgy until the next round of G for gloom. And eventually G for grief because he was gone, gone too soon leaving behind G for guilt. Wow. Shut up!